keys to Edmonton stuff seemed all but sh- all but done. But then, like a few days ago, it sounded like maybe it was cooling off, and there was a bit of a standstill. And Edmonton had a sort of take it or leave it offer. And I really hope that the offer that they gave up today, which was Duncan Keith going from Columbus, Columbus, from Chicago, he waves his no move clause. He will apparently retain that no move clause going into the expansion draft. Lucky duck. No money retained on Duncan Keith. The full cap hit will be going his way. Uh, sorry, to the Oilers' way. That is $5.5 million this year and next. In exchange, the Blackhawks get Caleb Jones in a third-round pick. I, I just don't get it. I saw Adam Wilde tweet that they gave up a, a pick and Caleb Jones for an overage assistant coach. And I think that about uh, that really sums this trade up perfectly. I I don't I see the value of adding Duncan Keith, yes. but I don't see the value in adding Duncan Keith at full price and having to pay a third round pick. When let me just pull this up here one second. They don't have many picks. Uh, they don't have their or they have their first, they don't have their second or third, they have their fourth, they don't have a fifth, they have two sixths and a seventh. Uh so did, did they say, oh, it must be next year's third? So is this your second is the Andres Athanasiu trade, right? Right. The seconds are Andres Athanasiu Athanasiu trade. I'm just this is kind of weird here. Can we talk about the fact that, that Ken Holland at the deadline said he you can't go in all year and followed that up with Duncan Keith for, for third and a young prospect? What's funny uh, is what I, what I kind of felt about this is yeah. a lot of the times people mentioned like, oh, Ken Holland, great guy. Like, you know, he, he is one of like the expert voices in the league. I'm not saying he's not, but man, does this feel like a 2009, 2010 Detroit Red Wings type of move. Just uh, you trade away a young asset and draft picks to get another veteran to add to your team. Like he did that with David Legwan. He did that with who else did he do that with? He did it with oh Eric Cole. Kyle, Kyle Quincy too. He gave yeah. him Celeski basically like the pick. So it, it's not great. I just I don't see the track records there. He, like the yeah, it fits the track record, but that doesn't that doesn't change the fact that this trade just listen, I made the argument Edmonton was the team to make this trade. I just didn't think they were stupid enough to make the trade like this. Like these assets at the thing I can't get over is you got the full cap hit. Yeah. 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 And you gave up like what Caleb Jones. Yes. He's 24, but from what I've read and what I've heard over the season about Caleb Jones, he seems to be, like he's supposed to be good. Like he's not going to be a top end prospect or top end player, but he's supposed to be a good defenseman and say what you want about Caleb Jones, but giving him up in a trade for 38 year old Duncan Keith, who makes 30, sorry, 37 year old Duncan (laughs) Keith, who makes over $5 million. And like, to me, adding Duncan Keith means, okay, we are sheltering him. Like, what are you going to do? Play him? 25 third like 25 minutes a night like you can't use him like you use darnell nurse and let's say they don't have clef bomb you can't use him as clef bomb you know what's i find really really funny here is is the word is chicago really wanted caleb jones because they're trying to make a push for yeah. seth jones yeah which is like, okay cool you know, whatever that's your play kind of goes against their whole rebuild strategy by the way um which was you know whatever like i, I get if the, if the oilers because they have other young defensemen we think of evan bouchard we think of philip broberg but it's just the move to also and by the way defensemen take longer to develop it, it's a proven fact um so i i just don't know i don't think i'm gonna echo what i said about when the canucks got tyler to foley you know, if a, if a team like Tampa made this move, you could be like, like as in not this exact trade, but they make this kind of overpaid move to bring in the defense. Like I I I referenced it like the the Hemo team in trade before we started uh, the show. You know, after that, the the Blackhawks turn into a dynasty. 
the move for the Oilers in this point in time when they've won a single playoff round in the McDavid era, including just coming off a sweep against the Jets, who then got swept the following round, your move is not to bring in some help forward to get McDavid the best line mate he's had since Pat Maroon. I'm not letting go of that. The move is to bring in Duncan Keith at the... the and. I, the reaction I keep seeing from Oilers fans, which I think is hilarious, is, well, you're getting a Hall of Famer. I'm aware of that, but guess what? Neither of us are the teams we cheer for and see, oh, great, we're getting early 2000s Jason Spezza and Corey Perry. No, his, that's, that's done. It doesn't matter if he's a Hall of Famer. Like if you just if it's a sign, you're like whatever. You didn't cost you any assets. He will teach the young defenseman. However, when there is no cap available and you need your assets and you need your picks, especially because the Athamasio and uh, Athamasio and the Andy Green deal, like they didn't work. Oh, Mike Green, sorry, didn't work out. Whatever. But it's just after the nothing being done at the trade deadline, and then everything together for Duncan Keith, who was advanced numbers were god-awful. And again, 37, and he has so much playoff wear and tear on that body. What are yeah. you doing? Someone someone texted me who cl- like doesn't follow hockey closely, but gets the gist of it. Was He asked me, he goes, is, like, is this their way of trying to keep McDavid? And I go, maybe, but if that's the move Ken Holland makes, like that's that's embarrassing. And I just, I just want to bring something up here. This is from Jonathan Willis, I believe of the athletic. Yep. The athletic, um, the Duncan, Duncan Keith trade is the tipping point. We're no longer really allowed to talk about Ken Holland's hands being tied financially by Peter Shirelli. Keith plus Cassian combined for $9.1 million in cap space. And both were Holland decisions. He had money. This is how he's used it. Like, remember when McDavid gave up, my, we talked about it last episode. Uh, McDavid gave up a million dollars. And part of that went to Milan Lucic. Mm-hmm. It's like, so you're giving, you have all this money. You re-sign Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Great deal, but like pretty good deal. Length. Whatever, that's fine. Mm. But then you add five full million dollars of Duncan Keith. Uh, even if you buy out, it's weird, by the way, that we haven't seen any buyouts yet because the window's been open for a few days now. Yeah. You could say, like, okay, they're going to maybe they look at buying out James Neal. At the same time, though, it, it's, I just, I don't make that deal if you don't. I, 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 I'm sorry I'm repeating myself here. I just can't get over that cap hit. I can't do it. Like, I'm looking at their cap friendly right now. And it's just barren, guys. There's nothing there still. I, I just, it's not Duncan Keith of the past anymore. And, and they still got to figure out what they're doing in that. What about this apparent offer that's been on the table for some of their other defensemen? Like, what are they doing with Barry and Larson? I don't think anything is like in paper for those guys yet. No, these they're still UFAs on, on cap friendly, just a messy situation. Just, just completely messy and an, an unnecessary trade too, from the Oilers, like Ken Holland, he hasn't done anything positive. Like that has moved the needle for his team in the positive direction. In so long, like, what was it? Moving the Datsu deal was probably the last big thing he did. I, I would have argued, I would yeah. have made the argument the Athanasiu deal was supposed to be positive, but I think the circumstances of the of the uh, of the season being stopped a week and a half, two weeks later were mm-hmm. unfortunate because I think by all accounts, like he should have worked well with McDavid. And I think if you had given him the time, it might have. But again, mm-hmm. like that's 2020 hindsight. Mm-hmm. Anything else you guys want to mention on this front? Um, my prediction was wrong. What was your prediction? I thought he, I said he was going to be the first captain of the Seattle Kraken. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. By the way, uh, side note, obviously great trade for the Blackhawks. Oh yeah. Yes. Nice to get yeah. that money off the books. Um, gr- great stuff. Amazing stuff for them. I'm happy for them. Uh, actually, well, no, not, not, not really, actually. never mind. I should, should have thought about that before I said that. They now have $11 million, uh, in cap space. In the How center. much of that is going to go to Seth Jones? I wonder. 
Yeah, they're probably gonna because I, I believe they had like five eligible defensemen that have to be protected, but they're gonna they have to protect three. Yeah. Oh. So it's what Caleb Jones, Riley Stillman, and Connor Murphy. Because I really don't. I think Zadorov is gone. Yep. And they should not protect Calvin DeHaan. Man, that's just a whole lot of nothing. But hey, that's what they want to do. That's what I still don't get. Why are you going out there, Seth Jones? 